So, welcome everybody from also from my side. I'm very happy that we already have the third Chase Xcraft conference, and I'm I'm very excited about the uh, submissions for the talks, and yeah, happily look forward for the next three days. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I announced uh, Chase Escraft news at this part, but um, it has expanded to a short workshop. If we don't have enough time, we will uh, continue tomorrow sometimes. Um, yeah, what I want to say in the next few minutes is the following. Yeah, first, my name is Alfred Wassermann. I'm the Chase Extra Fleet Developer here from University of Bayreuth, Germany. And I want to sum up a little bit uh, in the next few minutes what happened since the last Chase Extra conference. And uh, this is not directly uh, information for beginners. If you start uh, to program Chase Extra, I would advise you to look at this uh, YouTube video, to look at the handbook, or to look at the Chase Escraft Wiki, which contains several hundred examples uh, and applications. Um, if you are an intermediate or advanced user, I want to remind you that uh, the previous two conferences um, provide a lot of information about um yeah programming tricks and and other applications and very wonderful talks and moreover in the meantime in the year 2020 2021 we had a, a series of uh lectures webinars which are all online uh, about special programming features with chase xcraft and last but not least we have the api doc documentation which you can find online with quite a few examples too yeah uh, as always in these webinars i will start how to include chase xgraph in a web page um i just want to yeah you have to to link how somehow the chase xgraph core file and chase xgraph uh, style sheet file and uh, you can do this in at least three different ways. You can use a local copy of Chase Xcraft Core by just by downloading it from from the uh, download page in Chase Xcraft, or by installing the npm package of Chase Xcraft, or to use one of those two CDNs if you want to have a. a um, remote location. What is not rec recommended is to to use the Chase Escraft core from the from our web page uh, as an online resource because the web page is uh, this is not a twenty four seven server and um, we cannot guarantee that it it runs that it has zero downtime down, downtime. Yeah. Okay, I want to give you a short interview, inter overview of what has been done in the last year. And first, I have to apologize and tell you what has not been done. Uh, namely, we promised to continue our monthly webinars, but um, we simply had time uh, problems and, and couldn't do it, but hopefully we can continue it in, in this winter. Then we presented in the last conference a wonderful database, so to say, the improved wiki. And but we had time to fill it up, and this has to be postponed to this winter. Um, the Chase Escraft homepage will be updated in a, in a few weeks. Uh, we have a new template now, and um, this the transition process will start now. And of course, we didn't handle many GitHub issues, and um, I hope we can do it in the next time. So this is, has not been done. And uh, the first thing I want to mention what has been done is accessi the accessibility issue. 
of Chase X graph. So um, the ARIA attributes have been um, added already in, in January 2021. This was uh, started by Christian Lawson Perfect. And um, <clears throat> we have now two ARIA attributes, title and description. I will say a few words later on. Then we added keyboard control in uh, August 21. And now in this year, we added color support. Color support means we, we you, you can, or Chase Escaf provides a special color palette optimized for colorblind people. It's a so-called Wong color palette, which we use. Uh, these are the uh, RGB values and um, I've linked uh, to a web page where this Wong palette is uh, is displayed. So um, the different yellow, green, red values are optimized so that colorblind people, red, green, colorblind people can distinguish them. Okay. <clears throat> um, now uh, to some other features which uh, happened uh in the last year um first as carsten already mentioned we have a preliminary 3d support but I, this i want to postpone to tomorrow afternoon in germany um then we have a new element called foreign object um this is a very powerful op uh, new element which allows to include videos and, and other um, content in the JSX condition, uh, uh, construction. And I want to postpone this to Bernard Martinez talk tomorrow. And among the new elements, other new elements, we have uh, the box plot uh, here. Here's an example. So you supply some data and uh, you uh, compute some percentiles, yeah, percentiles, and then you can uh, plot the box plot, and it it should look like like this. Okay, and if you, yeah, and uh, there are a few more options uh, up to now, so you can uh, also plot it uh, horizontally. Or you, uh, yeah, this is the same one. Uh, or you can supply slider values, so the the quantiles uh, could also be uh, functions, which may be interesting for some questions, uh, uh, question types. Okay, <clears throat> so. Uh, then uh, we included some improvements to the code, hopefully, and I, I must admit some were really overdue and uh, were requested since since many years. For example, um, getting the term of a Lagrange polynomial. Then we have uh, this this example. So we have two points and. Uh, it's well known that uh, yeah, you can uh, construct a line uh, which uh, goes through this, which contains these two points. And now you can display the, the function graph of this line, uh, the function term, or the function description of this, uh, of this line. Then uh, you can add a point. So this is the usual Lagrange uh, polynomial. And the term is now uh, can can be displayed, and you can add more terms. The the dotted line is the derivative. Yeah, and so on. You can continue or remove points, and so on, and so on. And uh, this can be done by um, with the Lagrange polynomial uh, example is already on the wiki. 
it's it's an old example, but you can now uh, add uh, get the the new method get term from this Lagrange polynomial. Here you have this Lagrange polynomial. It's the function f. Depending on the on the array points, dynamic array points, and now you can uh, call the method get term and uh, supply the name of the variable and and the the, the symbol uh, multiplication symbol. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So this is one new example of one new improvement. And another much requested feature was to have uh, a more flexible labeling of the of, of axis. And this is a quite recent fe uh, feature. So now in former times, only the major ticks could have, um, so the infinite lines here, they could have uh, labels, and now you can tell uh, how many minor ticks you want to have. Let's say in the vertical axis, three minor ticks, and uh, then ticks per label is two. So, yeah, and then you get uh, get uh, labels per uh, for minor ticks too. Okay, this is a small improvement. Then another improvement is uh, has inner points, the attribute has inner points works now also for curves. So here's an example. We have two circles. We have two circles, A1 and A2. And uh, we compute the curve intersection between these two circles, the, the yellow yeah, and fill this um, area uh, with yellow color. Okay, and now the old behavior uh, was um, a curve or circle is highlighted whenever uh, the mouse pointer is uh, uh, over exactly over the the circle line and the same is true for this intersection curve so the curve is uh, highlighted here with this blue highlight fill color is blue if the mouse pointer is on the curve line if you are inside it's not highlighted and this is now can be enabled with true. Of course, it does not make sense in every situation. So here now I can also go into the interior of the of the curve. And uh, you can use it, for example, for an application like this. Here we have a curve, um, a polar curve, and we can uh, move this curve by dragging it uh, on the boundary. So in the inside it doesn't work. And the new behavior is now we can, uh, so we have to make it uh, draggable, we have to set fixed equals fixed to false. And now we can add has inner points true. And then we can move the curve. So this may also be a nice feature for some for some questions <clears throat> or applications. Yeah, here's the code. And uh, then we have some more improvements uh, which uh, well I don't want to show examples um, we have this board attribute keep aspect ratio uh, um, so if if you don't have a square division and uh, but you want to have the circles 
uh, displayed as circles and not as ellipses, then you have to uh, to to uh, set keep aspect ratio true. But uh, if you did this on an on a, and you looked at such a construction at the on a on a touch device and you switch the orientation from landscape to port, portrait and, and vice versa, then uh, the, the construction floated away. And this is now handled in most cases. Uh, it was suggested by Murray Byrne. It's still not perfect. He already found uh, situations where it still um, um, vanishes into infinity, but um, uh, yeah, I'm be working on it. Then another feature is full screen mode. This was up to a few weeks. It was dependent on the zoom level uh, of the browser somehow. Uh, and this should be, this, this was a, a bug and this is uh, hopefully now uh, fixed. Then uh, people ask for, for the for an attribute rotatable for for lines or other uh, uh, elements. Um, if this uh, attribute is set to false, then you cannot um, cannot rotate uh, an element anymore. You can only translate it. Um, yeah, and then a very old missing feature was the intersection between curve and circle and this this was somehow overlooked and it it exists now yeah then a few words about the about uh, the chase extra ecosystem so to say we have many new examples in the api documentations api documentation we have set up a new unit test system uh, unit test system based on karma uh, jasmine and it's now quite easy to supply tests and hopefully people jump on it and and supply unit tests um, this is one example you have a board and then you can add tests this is a test the highlighted area um, well uh, you create some constellation and then you uh, test something. So you want to find a ratio to be to be equal to three between these three vectors. Okay. Uh, and uh, then uh, we have a H5P plugin for Chase XGraph. It's uh, download uh, able at the H Chase X of H5P Chase X graph uh, project. And um, well, you can add Chase X graph constructions. It's more or less the most easy way to add uh, Chase X graph constructions to, um, to, uh, to Moodle. Because most um, Moodle administrators allow h5p and interestingly well and the, first i must say there are two versions a main and a security branch and you should uh, choose the security branch otherwise um, there's a danger for cross-site uh, 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 scripting interestingly already many it's not very it has not very, very much uh, uh, announced, and we have we have people have contributed uh, translations. Uh, this is really amazing. Yeah. <clears throat> then, more on the technical side, Chase Xcraft is meanwhile available as uh, an ES6 module. Uh, so you can import Chase extra from somewhere and start the construction. So script type equals module and uh, yeah, and start the construction. Um, then um, a user with the name Holger Engels, he has a KMAP 
project, he uh, convinced us to uh, support Shadow DOM. What is it? Yeah, think of the video tag uh, of the video element. There you have control elements, and these are um, the control elements are HTML. They are done with HTML, but you cannot access it as a developer. And this is uh, Shadow DOM. You you have a, a namespace, so to say, for CSS and get element by ID. And it's useful to create web components. So here's an example from this uh, Holger, from Holger Engels. It's an NPM project. So you can, uh, you have to add his project. And then uh, you have the tag kmap.jsxgraph, and you can uh, add uh, well attributes and code. And this is a closed web component, and no other CSS can can uh, destroy it somehow, or uh, there are no name clashes. Then, yeah, finally, I want to want to. Uh, to call for help or collaboration. Um, so we have we have uh, TypeScript support. Meanwhile, in, in JSXGraph, this was is a project by initiated by David Holmes, who will give a talk in this conference. It's not fully complete. Um, please send pull requests if something is missing. We already really many people uh, send pull requests and add uh, missing features in 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 this file um yeah and so we hope that we continuously will will uh, make it complete then aria support can be improved of course so uh, mary burn had some suggestions so if you are into aria support please please help us I, we are not experts and then there's a very new project, JSON 2D, JSXGraph, was also a user request. Request. People want to uh, call in certain projects called Mathix, Simia, or in Wolfram. Um, uh, the, well, 2D um, commands, and this it, it's already possible to expand these into JSON. And now we have to uh, convert this JSON uh, into a JSX of construction. And I started, well, quite uh, only yesterday, I started a project. So if you want to volunteer, please, please help us to do this. So here's an example how it could be. Uh, so plot piecewise uh, something, and then here's the JSX of construction. Um, this is related to this uh, talk on, on, on Jupyter notebooks, which we have um, in the conference. So quite interesting, quite exciting things are going on. Yeah, this is for the moment. and.